Hi guys. Anybody got a worm? Got some uh, new noisy neighbors in my tank garage. That's okay. So we're gonna go leave them alone. Mama's probably yelling at me somewhere real close. Sunday morning. It's been raining and raining and raw and raining. It's 39 degrees. Yeah, we're almost in the June. The rain gauge is filling up even more. I think we got uh, looks like about a good six inches of rain in the last three days. So we're going inside. Yesterday was a day of, other than going to Sam's Club, and grabbing some supplies. Uh, we're sitting around watching YouTube videos. <laughs> so I got to watch quite a, quite a few. Um, and then the day before that was uh, making up a trailer hitch for the bus. And uh, you'll see why I'm making a trailer hitch in a later video. But for now, uh, the focus is on actually the hitch itself. So... There's not much to attach to underneath the bus because the motor's in the rear. Um, that V piece right there is actually from a Beetle. And what they do is, back by the uh, frame horns uh, for the, with the tranny mount is, uh, they sandwich a plate and uh, get some support off of that. I'll show you underneath. So that part from a Beetle is the same on a, on a split window bus. So I, I utilize that part of it. But then I had to kind of come around and catch the two frame rails with the bumper bolts too. And then continuing on where that hole is right there, it's going to bolt to the bumper too. So it gives me five attachment points. And if it doesn't work, I could turn it into some goofy looking lawn art looking dude. And that's his head up top where the toe ball is. And... more hardware going right there <clears throat> kind of see where we're going this is that training mount and uh, this is the strongest part of a VW right here and uh, you can see that that steel plate is still there and what it does is it sandwiches itself between this trans mount that bolts up to it and kind of just crushes itself right there so your distance between that and the back bumper is pretty far. You probably got, you know, a good 30 inches of distance between that bolt. Got a plate sandwiched up on top there. There's another plate going to go underneath it. And then that flat bar comes across. Well, these bumpers are not very strong. There's not much to them. They're just pressed. And then the brackets that hold them aren't very much to them. So, I came up, up above that, took a, uh, eh, what's that? like uh, 3 8 plate and seeing which that is so that the frame uh, is the same width or a little bit wider than the bumper because I have to be able to remove this whole assembly anytime I do motor work so I got two points back there coming from the frame here the frame there and then uh, attaching to the bumper from there and that'll Give me a trailer hitch. Yep, a trailer hitch on a VW bus. I know. Just the comedic effect alone is worth doing it. And there's just some other, what I do is I, when I go around to yard sales, and uh, basically you see them in the garage stacked up against the wall. I usually pay about five bucks, a couple of bucks for them, and I use them for my sacrificial lambs when I'm making something. Unfortunately, there's not much room underneath there. You have to remember that that motor still needs to be able to, to tweak and move around because it's on a rubber. So you have to give everything a good, about an inch worth of clearance. So I heated and bent. That was normally straight right there. Uh, heated that, kicked it in. Um, these are all just separate plates that I just kind of tacked together and uh, made it just so I had some more support. This one had a bend in it. I had to heat that sucker up and straighten it out. It was longer. They actually, the toll wall was over here with another kind of like knuckle that came off of it. Uh, drilled that out. 
and everything is just actually welded together with a uh, flux core welder. And they do pretty good, especially when you're working on the thicker stuff. You kind of see I added another plate under there to kind of help tie all that together. So, so that's going on in a few minutes after we're done with this video. And let's see what we got to talk about. Oh, I got that light on. Let me shut your light off. That's annoying. Um, first, the uh, what happened with the uh, pile of VW stuff? Well, I went and I looked at it, and there is some stuff I could use on it, but everything was just so shot that um, there just wasn't much of value and it was nothing that I needed right now. So if something changes in the future and that pile is still there, I can always go get it. It was free. Um, but it was just like, you know, maybe the engine and the trans is kind of the only thing that was good. The beam was good. Uh, the shell had a bunch of uh, uh, patches on the dune buggy itself. And to be honest with you, I just didn't feel like trying to lift all that stuff up and transfer it over to my trailer because it's not like the thing ran, uh, rolled rather, so I couldn't use it in that fashion as far as uh, getting it off of the one and putting it on the other. And uh, being one that had uh, back surgery, <laughs> that's always in the back of your mind when you're looking at that. And, uh, you know, I, I just, just didn't feel like trying to deal with it. Plus, I'm in the mood of cleaning stuff up right now, so I wanted to... Uh, not have just another pile of crap laying around that I wasn't going to get to. So it stayed where it is. Uh, there's a possibility, a slight possibility I may grab that stuff, but um, I'd rather pay 200 bucks for something and have just a lot more quality of parts uh, than that stuff was being for free. You know how that goes. It was tempting. It was. I have my little cheat sheet. It's early in the morning, so... Uh, my mind doesn't quite work as good as it does in the evening. I should always do my videos in the evening, but, you know, <laughs> so be it. Um, the, uh, the stuff that was in the dump trailer, the uh, tractor that was in there, everybody was commenting, like, how can you let it go with those tires or that transmission? The trans was blown, the shifter was ripped right out of the case of it, so it was no good. And uh, the tires held air for about 5-10 minutes. They were so dry rotted on the sidewalls that it would just go flat. So uh, both of those were not worth saving. And uh, hence that's why they went. I would have kept them if, if not. Um, <laughs> just the way it goes. So, alright, we're going to move on to the scrap challenge. And everybody's making their, uh, their bets of how much it would cost. Including myself, I guessed 80 bucks. Um, I probably make a dump run maybe once a year, if that. Um, so, without further ado, we went to Haverhill Steel. And our grand total in weight was 1,750 pounds. Uh, they considered it light iron. And the grand total was 122.50. So I was way off. I guessed 80 bucks, and it seems like everybody thought I knew what I was talking about because a bunch of them started guessing right around the amount that uh, uh, I was guessing, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Some guys are up like 450 bucks. I think the lowest is like 50 bucks or so. All right, our winner is Rocky SC, who was a late entry uh, sometime uh, this morning, probably about two or three in the morning. He guessed 123.45, so he missed it by 90 cents, and uh, or 95 cents rather, whatever. So, but uh, he's was the winner, and uh, right before that, it was going to be Spinner Man Tim at 125.55. He was our next closest. I don't care about going over. I don't play. Uh, um, the price is right just the closest that you came so you win nothing but uh congratulations <laughs> you know your junk all right <laughs> and what else we got to go talk about uh, i think that's really about it for that stuff now we can just kind of go on and uh, ramble at nothing. Some shop supplies for the garage, as you can see from uh, uh, Sam's Club last night, being uh, some oil, some uh, beverages for the garage, and uh, paper towels. And I'm gonna try their crappy batteries. 
and see how long they last. I'm going to put those in uh, like my, my mag light kind of thing. And I use these for, uh, I wear a headlight. Instead of using um, uh, drop lights, I switched over to using these kind of headlights. All this kind of stuff. There's a couple of different ones in here. But uh, the light's always where you need it, wherever you're looking. And you don't have to hold on to it. So, while I was um, doing a bunch of drilling on, the garage is a mess. I have everything tore apart. Um, while I was doing a bunch of drilling, and I had to go and drill out for the tow ball through that thick piece of metal, and it was larger than half inch. My, uh, I was trying to come up with something I could use on the, on the lathe to punch that hole larger, and lo and behold, I had this um, this box of bits over here, and they go up to a pretty large size. Uh, it's upside down. But I think the largest is going to be uh, 19 30 seconds. 3364, 1930 seconds is larger, actually. Now we go larger than that. Goes up to three quarter. And uh, these bits have that, that tapered shaft to them. Um, call it, I guess you call it, the type of uh, call it that it takes. And uh, that was that came with the, um, the lathe setup. But looking at my drill press, I found out that my chuck pops out and uses that same setup, so I don't have to worry about trying to get a two inch, uh, a three quarter inch uh, bit inside a half inch chuck because the bits themselves, there's a smaller one in here now, but uh, fit right into the chuck. So I found that to be really cool because now I could use that for almost like a little mini bridge port. Uh, I do have a, uh, a vise that I found that moves in a uh, the X and the Y axis and then has the clamp on top of it too so I can uh, kind of mill out some stuff using the end mills that will fit in that chuck but also just having these really cool drill bits that work really well so uh, I'm happy to have figured that out man rust is hitting this thing I gotta spray it down the, again the humidity has just been ridiculous the last couple days I think some fluid film needs to go on that puppy and again, you know that they're uh, good drill bits when you're uh, curling off those guys like that. So, all right, guys. Well, it is uh, Sunday morning, and I think I am going to go try to go around and see if I can go find myself a yard sale or two, and possibly work, work my way over to a buddy's house who has a, um, I believe it's a '78 uh, VW LT, which is their light truck. Kind of looks like a big bread truck. Uh, they're common in other countries, not so much in this one. Uh, there's only a few of them over here, and uh, that's been sitting for quite a few years. It's a diesel. Um, he's had to, he's been trying to, to sell it, and uh, he's um, went and charged the battery. The battery took a charge, and uh, he said there's an issue with the glow plugs not glowing the last time they tried starting it, which I think was about three years ago. So I may go over there, or yard sale my way over there, and see if I can get um, him started, and I'll do a video, and uh, see if we can get that thing cranking, and fire it up, do a cold start. And he's also the same guy that has that spare steering wheel for the split window, so that I can go and do this wheel, and make the hub for the center of it, and uh, make a cool steering wheel for the bus. And I'm gonna drop it at that, because everything else is just trying to get them off the top of my head. And as 